Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. I was uh, coming down my elevator this morning and I opened it and there was like an autistic uh, kid or like a young, maybe in his teens, late teens. And he was like, he was in the elevator and he was going, press four, press four. And the guy, and I was like terrified because the, the elevator opened and he was just sweating and screaming, press four, like as loud as I'd ever heard. And there was a, like a Saudi next to him, like a skinny Saudi, like one of the 19 hijacked. They just all look alike. It's He didn't do it, but they just a skinny Saudi. Think any of them, Muhammad Atta, whatever. And he's, and not that they're all, but you know what I mean? It's that aesthetic in the elevator next to this kid. And then I'm like, all right, I'll wait for another one. And then the Saudi walks out. He goes, I'll wait for another one too. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? He goes, I don't know who this guy is. I just walked in the elevator and he started screaming, press four, press four. He started hitting the call button and screaming at security. So like the the mental, it's crazy what's going on out there. And then I was eating lunch in a, in a grocery store and a guy just came up to me, I swear to God, out of nowhere. And he was going up to everyone in the store and he's going, you know, a guy I met told me, he goes, you know what I do? I provide drugs to the Rolling Stones. And I said, no way. And then he got Keith Richards on the phone and I played him satisfaction and he liked it. So, and then he goes, so what? He's a drug dealer. You never know. And I go, okay. And he's going up to everyone in the store and telling them that exact story over and over, word for word, no variation. Just going up to like the next person who's like getting a tomato and going, I met a guy and you know what he said he did? He, get, he sold drugs. He provides drugs to the Rolling Stones. I said, no way. Get Keith Richards on the phone. And you know what he did? And then I played him Satisfaction, and he liked it. So he's a drug dealer, but you never know. And then there'd be like a woman ladling soup into a thing, and he goes, a guy I met came up to me, and he said, I provide drugs to the world. And everybody is just kind of like nodding like, yes. And, and it just, the level of mental illness in the country now is so obvious like it's glaring, it's in mm. your face. If you're not recognizing it, you're not paying attention. It's so out in front. I mean, so many of the people that you come across on a day-to-day -day basis have lost it. They're no longer playing the game you're playing in reality. They're somewhere else. You know, nervous breakdowns, psychic breaks, you know, trauma-induced schizophrenia. I don't know, but people are wandering around the world right now so much so that it's not shocking anymore. Like, you're like, yep, that guy's, you know, it used to be like, ooh, that guy's not. Now you're just like, yep, yeah, it's the guy that talks about the Rolling Stones at lunch every day. There's nothing anyone can do, and, you know. And the thing is, he's not, like, frothing at the mouth put him in the home crazy. He's just like, kind of like, let, we can tolerate it. Fine. He tells a nice little story over and over again. Crazy. The elevator guy, the kid in the elevator was a little, a little too nuts. And to where even the Saudi guy walked out, he goes, I'll take the next one. He goes, yeah, he just came in and started screaming. He was sweating at this wiry hair and he's screaming, press fire, press fire, fire. And I was just like, I pay a lot of money to live in this building. Um, but this is what happens, right? I mean, this is, you know, a friend of mine uh, has a job as like a companion. And, and, and it's kind of a sober companion. But what he also does is very wealthy families will pay him to spend time with their children. And their children could have um, debilitating addiction. They could have severe autism. And, you know, his job. Is to, and, and, you know, I feel for all of those people in all of those situations, you know what I mean? Like, uh, but his job is to like walk them around Central Park or like hang out, like try to make things better for them because it is very difficult. Um, but it was just very jarring when the elevator doors open. He's got press four. And I don't know. I also get mad because I think what happened was he was trying to go to four and somehow we ended up on my floor. And I also, you know, I've had that happen to me, but you could tell something wasn't right with him. Like he was like spitting as he talked and sweating as he pressed floor. And I was just like, oh my God, and his clothes were weird. You, you know, it's just a strange, 
he looked like the guy. Get up recess. Get up the bully on on the show recess. It was a cartoon that I used to watch. Uh, Randall, he, yeah, Randall. Name? So go yeah. up, right, right. Okay, so yeah, he looked exactly like Randall from Recess, the guy in the elevator, going press four, press four. I told you, press four. I just kept saying press four, press four, press four. So it was a little traumatic. It was a, it's an interesting day, just noticing how many people are just not with it. They're off, and there's nothing to be done. And as long as they're not trying to kill you, you just have to let it go, which is what you should. You know, you go, hey, but it is something you can notice, you know. Um, we were talking the other day about um, Hollywood on this show, and we had mentioned the Batgirl movie that had gotten shelved, meaning they're not releasing it. Mm. And there's a lot of people that, um, were confused about that. Um, and they were thinking, was that a marketing ploy? Were they, you know, trying to say like, Hey, uh, they, they thought maybe there'd be an outpouring of like, no, we really want to see Batgirl. Uh, for whatever reason, they're not releasing it. Mm. Um, and you know, there's this idea that everyone in Hollywood's like a, a lunatic, uh, but there, that's only true of certain people. And there are certain people that are actually good and they're actually people that are trying to do the right thing and they are good, they're a good example. They're like an example for people. And one of them, uh, and again, this is a non-binary person, so I'm going to try to do this the right way and use all the right things because I believe in you, but it's hard and difficult to always remember. So don't come for me if I say the wrong thing. But this is about an actor who is actually a very, uh, this is someone you want to, if you're a child, you want to kind of emulate this guy um, who's not a guy. Who's, see, again, I, I re, already, already it's hard. Literally already, I, it's this person, this entity, um, Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller is a non-binary actor who is, a great role model for children. Mm -hmm. And there you see them, you see them there. Nothing awkward about saying that. You see them there. You see them there. Good, seems good. English, everyone, you see them there with uh, a skull necklace and a fur coat. Now, Ezra Miller has been having problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. With the studio who is releasing the movie The Flash. The studio is called Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. And there is a movie coming out called The Flash. It is a superhero movie. Of course it is. <laughs> because um, we will refuse to make any movies anymore unless they are about superheroes or slaves. Those are the two genres of film that we are interested in making. Uh, you're either being beaten and whipped in a field or well, you're flying through the air trying to save someone. Those are the only two <laughs> representations of any person you will see in cinema at the current moment. Ezra Miller was in this called The Flesh. Mm. Now, what's going on with Ezra Miller? There's uh, issues. There's problems, right? A long timeline of uh, legal troubles here. He's had a... Uh, they, they... Oh, they, 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 I'm sorry. They! Just because he choked uh, someone and kidnapped someone <laughs> does not mean that we, you, we can get all loosey-goosey here mm. with the terms. Mm. Uh, Ezra Miller, early in the pandemic, video leaked of Miller choking a woman outside the, I don't even want to pronounce it, but in Reykjavik, Iceland. Mm. It's a bar. In the clip, which seems to pick up mid-confrontation. A smiling woman approaches Miller and appears to start a play fight. Well, is this going to be one of those things where I have to side with them? Miller takes her motion seriously and says, okay, you, you want to fight? That's what you want to do? Before grabbing the woman by the neck, pushing her against the dumpster, throwing her to the ground, at which point the video cuts out. Seems excessive. Mm. Hey, Ezra, 
At the time, Variety confirmed Miller's identity with the bar, which said Miller frequented the location when they were in town. So he choked a woman. Yes. Not great. Not good. Not great PR for the Flash. In on January 27, 2022, Miller began their fateful year by posting a video to social media threatening a North Carolina faction of the Ku Klux Klan. This is a message for the Blueville. Uh, Beulahville, Beulahville chapter of the North Carolina KKK. The actor says in a clip, um, look, if y'all want to die, I suggest killing yourselves with your own guns, okay? Otherwise, keep doing exactly what you're doing right now, and you know what I'm talking about, then you know we'll do it for you. If that's what you really want, it's unclear what prompted Miller's threat to the hate group. Da 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 He has no known ties to the North Carolina city. Mm. See, that's what makes me laugh, is it's not just the KKK in general. It's a specific... North Carolina, almost like he has a problem with a person in that specific faction mm -hmm. of the North Carolina uh, chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. In Beulahville. In Beulahville. Like, listen, guys, uh, we are going to figure out what's going on with the Beulahville KKK. Um March 28, 2022, Hawaii arrest number one. Miller spent their spring in Hawaii. By all accounts, they were a menace to everyone around them. On March 28th, the actor was visiting a local karaoke bar when they grew agitated and began, quote, yelling obscenities and at one point grabbed the microphone from a 23-year-old woman singing karaoke. Later, Miller lunged at a 32-year-old man and failed to calm down after being asked several times by the bar owner. Miller's interactions with the two bar patrons earned them. A and by the way, I can't get anything made because I sat next to Alex Jones on a podcast. Just to give you an idea, this person is being, this is all okay. Who does he have photos of? They. Who do Repair they have? Photos. Who do they? When did Ezra Miller come out as non-binary? I think a few years back. Okay, few years great. Back. Well, it's clearly helped their behavior. So Miller then posts five hundred dollars bail. They let him out. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Miller argues that they, in fact, were the victim of assault, claiming a self-identifying Nazi in the bar attacked him. There's always Nazis everywhere popping up. A Nazi in the bar attacked them. And explaining that they recorded themselves being assaulted in order to make NFT crypto art. Mm -hmm. So Ezra Miller said, I was attacked by a Nazi and I recorded it to make crypto art. Yeah, basically. Yeah. He's accusing, he's saying the Nazi was doing they, that. They are saying. They were saying. They are saying that. When does he, okay, shortly after the karaoke bar incident, Miller was arrested again in Hawaii for allegedly throwing a chair that struck a woman in the head. At around one in the morning, can I do this if I become non-binary? Can I throw chairs at women and go crazy at bars in Hawaii? Like, can I do all of that? Mm. Is that, because by the way, I don't feel, really, to be honest, I didn't feel like a man or a woman today. I had... Uh, uh, tomatoes and onions and, and I rolled it up and I didn't eat any bread and I rolled it up with lox and cream cheese and I ate it in the grocery store and I just sat there while the crazy guy talked about the Rolling Stones. I didn't feel my cock. I, if I had a vagina, I, that would have also been okay. Like I, I felt kind of like either one. So what I'm saying is if I if fully embrace my kind of gender neutral fluid identity, can I choke women? outside of bars and throw chairs at their head? It's a, it's a fair question. Um, this is one of those things with Ezra Miller where everybody goes, you got to look into it, you got to look into it, you got to look into it. I've never looked into it. I just ignore it, ignore it, ignore it because like, it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then Miller was accused of acting inappropriately toward two different children. First, the parents of Iron Eyes, an 18-year-old environmental, I mean, folks, the parents of Tokata Iron Eyes, an 18-year-old an environmental activist, sought a protective order against the actor saying who they began an inappropriate... Maybe you don't get your pronouns um, honored if you throw chairs at women's heads. Could that be a good rule? Where we go, hey, so for if you are going to be violent, we're not going to actually honor the pronouns. 
So this is what they said. They said, Ezra Miller began an inappropriate relationship with Iron Eyes when they were 12 years old. Ezra uses violence, intimidation, threats of violence, fear, paranoid delusions, and drugs to hold sway over young adolescent Takata Iron Eyes, mm -hmm. parents said. However, posts from an unverified Instagram account believed to be owned by Iron Eyes deny all claims of abuse. So the parents claim one thing, but Iron Eyes says, nope, we're doing fine. Soon after, a 12-year-old and their mother were granted an order of protection from Miller after describing an uncomfortable interaction with the actor during a party in Greenfield, Massachusetts. The mother and then her 11-year-old attended a party held by their downstairs neighbor, which Miller also attended. At the event, Miller began screaming in the mother's face after accusing her of cultural appropriation and allegedly showed her a gun, saying, quote, talking like that could get you into a really serious situation. After that, Miller reportedly... Now, by the way, you know, I know Gavin just got clipped and everyone's going to be, you know, and I don't know what he did and Gavin's always been good to me, but I, you know, here's the deal. Everyone's going to be talking about right-wing terrorism. Every news article that you're going to read for the next 12 months will be about right-wing terrorism, which, again, does exist f for sure. There are paramilitary groups that do crazy things, capital riot, whatever. But this type of behavior where he's like showing a gun to someone, say talking about cultural appropriation, could we then move this into the category of a guy who is maybe influenced by the left a bit to doing some things that are inappropriate? Um, because he's using all like the terminology and he's got the gun and he's still in the movie. Mm -hmm. Yet... I imagine if this was kind of on the other side where he was talking about the great replacement theory or any, you know, and brandishing guns, he might not work. That's all. Curious. I don't know. Um, so he points a gun at a mother's face at a party uh, because she said something. She sh I don't know what she said. After that, Miller reportedly acted inappropriately toward the child by hugging them and touching their hips. They automatically were just weirdly drawn to me and kept talking about how they love my outfit and they love my style. Da -da 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 -da. It was really uncomfortable. I was nervous. I was scared to be around them after he'd yelled at my mother and she was crying. Why the mother then didn't leave the party is odd to me. In August 2022, those closest... Now, by the way, this person still has a job. They still, after all the shit, right? The Me Too, the cancel culture, every, this guy that's not a guy, that's a woman too, that's non-binary, that lives in the middle, and it's just hard because the name Ezra has always been a male name, but so it's difficult. It makes me, but they, the choker, the choker and the brandisher of guns at the mom, Still has a job in Hollywood. Odd. Interesting. Um, in August, those closest to Miller spoke to Insider for a report that paints the actor as increasingly unstable. <laughs> really? And apparently running sort of a cult. The report alleges that while Miller was in Iceland in 2020, they walked around town barefoot, sporting long, unclipped toenails, what may have been an infected gash on their foot. Miller, Miller rented an Airbnb in the Reykjavik suburb of Kopavogur, and they ran a commune with beds laid out on the floor for artists, expats, and young women. They group led they led group meditations that claimed to possess supernatural powers and also paid for food, lodging, and marijuana, but would become violent if they perceived any dissent within the group. These days, Miller runs another commune in Vermont, which, he, which has been described as having rampant drug use and unsecured guns. A woman and a... By the way, what is going on at Warner Brothers? How persuasive is this guy? Because, you know, cult leaders can be charismatic. How charismatic is this guy that Warner Brothers is going, yeah, let's just, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. And by this guy, I don't mean gendered guy. Right. I, mean, like, mean I mean, like, I call my friend Michelle. What up, guy? Mm -hmm. um, so Miller's running a commune in Vermont. Yeah. Um, Rolling Stone ran a whole article about that, too, like, like the mainstream media has picked it up, guns, bullets, and weed. He was housing three young children at this farm. There were guns laying everywhere. The one-year-old had a bullet in their mouth. It, it, they've been reporting on this for a minute. Yeah, so I, I uh, now go to the article about Warner Brothers where everything's kind of okay. 
because Ezra Miller came in and like apologized. Like I, I'm like, my mind is blown by the fact that this person, I mean, how good of an actor are they? Mm. Maybe they're great. It's kind of is where he met with them. Miller, who uses they, them pronouns in Metzger, met with new Warner Brothers film chairs, Michael DeLuca and Pamela Abbey to discuss not only how to stay on course for The Flash's June 23rd, 2023 release date, but to reaffirm their commitment to the movie as well as apologize for bringing negative attention to the production in the company. Over the past few years, Miller has been at the center of arrest and controversy culminating with the actor posting a mea culpa on August 15th, saying they were seeking help for mental health issues. Said the actor at the time, I want to apologize to everyone that I have alarmed and upset with my past behavior. According to sources, Miller vowed to seek help after learning that DeLuca and Abdi were considering all options for Flash, including scrapping the $200 million movie if things devolved further with Miller. $200 million. While the actor is said to not have minded the stream of bad headlines, they were spooked by the notion of the film getting canceled and jolted to take action. They care about the Flash. It's one of their favorite characters to play. <laughs> I mean, it's we're just living in a fucking d disgusting, you know, I mean, it's like a joke. It's like a complete, we're just living in a complete joke, you know? I mean, it's, you know, I, I drive around this town and, you know, today the tour, you know, the tour buses and some of them are like legit tour buses. Some of them are just these little vans that are sawed off and they have no, t you know, no roof. And, mm -hmm. and one of the guys recognized me, give me the peace sign or whatever. And, you know, I'm like, you know, like they're, they're driving around here and I'm like, get, you know, get off these things, like get off these fucking, whatever you're looking for here, whatever stardom you're looking for is in Reykjavik, Iceland running a cult. <laughs> like the, it, it's, it's such a joke. The town has become such a complete joke to people. It's a punchline of a joke that I, I'm amazed that that industry still exists. The tourism industry where people are like, show me the star. I mean, it's just, it's hilarious. That's neither here nor there. Um, I mean, it's, 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 you know, listen. Yeah. Felony burglary on August 7th. Yeah. He broke into someone's house and stole their liquor. And he got caught for that in Vermont. All right. Well, listen, I, I the, 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 he, they things oh, annoys yeah, me yeah. so much. We're not going to talk about it anymore. Um, I, I, is this part of coming out as non-binary in Hollywood, the ability to do all of these things? Is this part of it? If it's part of it, I think I would actually like to do it and I would like to get on board as soon as possible with it. I'm, I'm unaware of what makes violence against women and children uh, okay and what makes uh, running a cult okay, but apparently, you know, I don't know. It's strange. It's strange. I have no interest in the flash either way. I don't care. I don't care about any of these. I'm sick of these superhero movies. I'm sick of the children uh, that watch them. And by children, I mean 35 year old losers that are into fucking superhero movies. You're disgusting. You're a disgusting person. And I only watch movies from the nineties. Ben knows this. If I have a movie night at my house, I only watch films from the nineties and the early two thousands. Uh, for the most part, I don't want to be involved in any of this freak show that's going on right now where people with Peter Pan syndrome, and I know that the studios are not making money on other movies, so they have to make these to go global, fine. And some of them are enjoyable, you know, whatever. Um, you know, the, the big one with the Hulk and Thor, what was that one, the, the Avengers and all that? Listen, I, I, I'm not saying that they're, you know, listen, they're, they're fun every now and then. The fact that it is the only genre of entertainment in America is disgusting. The fact that it is the sole genre of which you can partake in going to see a film is disgusting because this is a country that has a lot of old people. There's more old people than young. There's going to be so many old people because of the birth deficit or whatever that there's so many old people and all of the movies are uh, superhero movies. So that's crazy to me. And, uh, that just upsets me. But this is, story is just funny to me because it is funny how many buttons this person can push, how much criminality they can be involved with. Uh, and Warner Brothers just goes, yeah, whatever. It's cool. It says full steam ahead in the article. They're full steam ahead. Good. Full steam ahead. Well, you know, maybe Ron DeSantis will put the military in there. I mean, it's what, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying like, you know, it's, 
It's like, uh, you know, it's crazy. If Ron DeSantis, I will support him right now if he promises to use the military to get me work in this town. Like if Ron DeSantis will use the military to literally go into these companies w with guns drawn and make me a star of some of these superhero films, I will support Ron DeSantis. And if he's, if he's man enough to make that promise where he will use the military, the power, the full power of the United States military to put boots on the ground in Beverly Hills and Hollywood and get me jobs then I will support him. And I know that I'm sure he's looking for an endorsement from this show. That is the, uh, that is what is needed. That is the requirement for a DeSantis endorsement is him using the military to replace uh, Ezra Miller with me in the flash, in the new flash film. From cringing at the pump to getting an eye popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts and it really hurts. That's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to Upside. I mean, you can use it at grocery stores or I use it at gas stations. To get started, download the free Upside app. Use my promo code TIMD and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of 10 or more. Next, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business, pay as usual with credit or debit card and get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more with cash back with Upside. Upside issues earning, uh, ish, Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Download the free Upside app and use promo code TIMD to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code TIMD. You just, I just use the app. When I get to the store, I just check in so I don't have to upload my receipt and it's all oh, good. Oh, it's so simple. Yeah, it's really easy. The cash appears in your Upside account and you can cash out at any time through bank transfer, PayPal, e-gift card to Amazon, Starbucks, and dozens of other places. There's no limit to how much you can earn. This is super easy to use. Most businesses don't require you to upload receipts. You can just click check in on the app and you can transfer the cash you've earned right to your checking account. It's real cash back. No points or loyalty rewards here. Users get real cash and can cash out at any time. Upside also works with, with other loyalty cash back and credit and debit card rewards program. It's loved by businesses and users alike. Users are earning three times more cash back with Upside than any other product, including loyalty programs and credit card rewards. Really, it's very interesting because you're going to do this stuff anyway. You're going to go to the grocery store, the gas station. So why not check in and make some money back? When I tried this, I didn't believe it worked, but it works. It works. Yeah, and even if you, if you share it with your friends, it helps increase your earnings. It's real cash. It's, you know, everybody needs a little bit of cash. Profiling, surveillance, data harvesting. There are lots of things not to like about the tech giants, but what can you actually do about it when you rely on so many of their products? We don't all have $44 billion to go buying up Twitter, and that guy didn't even do it. But the good news is you don't need to be a billionaire to take a stand. For less than $7 a month, you could join me and fight back against big tech by using ExpressVPN. How do you think big tech companies like Twitter make all their money anyway? Well, by tracking your searches, video history, and everything you click on, and then selling your personal data. ExpressVPN helps you anonymize much of your online presence by hiding your IP address, a unique identifier that has every device that allows big tech to match your activity back you. That's why I use ExpressVPN on all my devices to make it much more difficult for them to exploit my data for their own profits. And the best part is how easy it is to use ExpressVPN. I just tap one button on my phone or computer to turn it all on. And that's all it takes to keep people out of my business. If you don't like big tech tracking you and selling your personal data for profit, it's time to fight back. Visit expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon right now to get three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon, expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon. We use it all the time. Uh, everyone, it. everyone. I'm using I've, it right now. I, everyone I've ever met is using it, mm. to be honest with you. Um, I was reading this article and I sent it to Ben about children being medicated uh, and I took Adderall briefly when I was a, a youngster in um, uh, eighth grade. And it just, you know, I don't know. I just got a dry mouth. It didn't really work. I mean, I, I got a little speedy. But, you know, the grades didn't go up. So I think my parents were like, okay, let's not do it anymore. Um, 
Well, this is interesting. This teen was, pre- and by the way, I think people need medic medication. So don't, this isn't one of those things where I say no one needs medication. I think certain people need to be on their medication. I have them in my family and I know. But there is, you know, this teen here was prescribed 10 psychiatric drugs. Uh, she's not alone. One morning in the fall of 2017, Renee Smith, a high school freshman on Long Island, New York. Uh-huh, interesting. Could not get out of bed, overwhelmed by the prospect of going to school. In the following days, her anxiety mounted into despair. I should have been happy, she later wrote, but I cried, screamed, begged the universe or whatever godly power to take away the pain of a thousand men that was trapped inside my head. Intervention for her depression and anxiety came not from the divine, but from the pharmaceutical industry. The following spring, a psychiatrist pres- prescribed Prozac, the medication uh, we all associate with, you know, depression. Um, however, she kept taking it. The effect dissipated. She was uh, prescribed an additional antidepressant effects her. Um, during 2021, the year she graduated, she was prescribed seven drugs. These included one for seizures and migraines, which neither, she didn't have any of either one of those. But the drug can also be used to stabilize mood and another to dull the side effects of the other medications, although it's mainly used for schizophrenia. She felt better on some days and deeply sad on others. Her senior yearbook photo shows her smiling broadly, quote, but I feel terrible that day, said Miss Smith, who is now 19 and attends a local community college. I've gotten good at wearing a mask. Um... She had come to exemplify medical practice common among her generation, the simultaneous use of multiple heavy-duty psychiatric drugs. Psychiatrists and other clinicians emphasize that psychiatric drugs properly prescribed can be vital in stabilizing adolescents and saving the lives of suicidal teens, but these experts caution such medications are too readily doled out often as an easy alternative to therapy that families cannot afford or find. So that's an interesting... That's really an interesting thing. People, do we have better help this week? I don't think we do, actually. Would have been nice. Well, anyway, for a waste, people can't get therapy and they can't afford it. And and the doctors are just cramming pills down the throats of the, you know, a lot of people... Every now and then you'll meet a kid that you, it needs to be immediately drugged and you can tell. And I've, you know, I have mm-hmm. friends with children where the child is like, hi, 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 and you go, lock it in a cage. <laughs> you go, put the drugs in it and lock it in a cage. Because some people have kids that have, that have uh, problems. You see? Big problems. Okay, like my, my, you know, one of my friend's kids, like he was on his tippy toes a lot. He would just, you ever meet a kid like that? They're on their tippy toes and they're going like this. And I'm like, and you go, all right, that's, that's not going to get solved by a, a catch in the front yard, right? Catch isn't going to help that, like throwing a ball. That's not going to help that. I didn't even know what it was. But on their tippy toes. And then they would go like this and go, so. In those rare instances, when it's not going to be solved with a game of catch or some wheat bread, it's not solved with taking away some ice cream. It's a real problem. You got to sedate the children, drug them up, put the drugs in them and put them in the cage because they are a problem. Hyperactive. I don't know, but you you meet them every now and then. You're you're at a party. It's a nice barbecue, and then you know it's like the, the the it's the running of the bulls. The barn door opens, and out comes like, oh my god, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I don't know how it happened or what happened, <laughs> but the kid's a fucking lunatic. And you go, if this kid's not medicated, they will kill somebody or themselves. They'll burn something down. They're a liability. Some kids are a liability and they need to be drugged because they're fucking nuts. And I'm not a doctor and that's not the clinical term, but that's what happens. You've seen some of these kids, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they have hard times understanding what reality is. You explain to them that Roblox isn't real. It's not real life. They're like, what do you mean? But I'm in the game. My friends are in the game. That's everybody. My (laughs) point is when they're actually, it's not, that's not what I mean. What I mean is not a kid who's quietly playing a video game who thinks it's real. That's fine. Think it's real. Just shut up. My point is a kid who's like, (laughs) 
Yeah. You want to meet my dog? 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 You want to meet my... You know what I mean? Just where it's like, where it's mm. like, okay, okay, I'll meet your dog later. I'll meet your dog later. I've already met your dog. I've already met... Get the fuck away! <laughs> Those people need to be drugged, mm. some of those kids, because some of those kids have severe, 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 severe issues. Mm. But then there are those other kids in school, and you know the kids who are like, they're sad. They're like, I'm sad. And it's, I don't want it anymore. Like, I just don't want it anymore. I'm so sad. And that's very sad. So maybe you give him a little pill. You give him a little blue pill and you go, take a walk around the track. Every town mm. has a little track that no one uses. You to take a walk around the track and you have to take a little pill. Here's a little pill. Here's a little pill. You're a little overdramatic. But you can't give him like 13 types of medication. Mm. This is a problem. If you're really problem, like if you really have an issue where it's like you're like, I just, I'm not, I'm, and I'm not even, I'm not trying to make light of these things because people have, mm. they have genuine issues with depression, anxiety. My mother is a schizophrenic. I call it schizophrenic because she's locked up now. So it's just fun. She doesn't really bother anyone. Key, please. Um, but I get it. I've had anxiety my, myself. I have problems myself. So much of this is about, it's case by case. You yeah, know yeah, what sure. I mean? So there's people that are severely anxious and depressed that need medication to function in life. And then there are people who are having situational depression who with cognitive behavioral therapy, they can improve their lives greatly. That includes changes in diet. That includes maybe exercise that includes uh, moderation of drugs and or alcohol, even in marijuana, the, which everybody loves can exacerbate underlying mental health issues. This is a fact, right? So not everybody is a well-adjusted person. There's a lot of people. I'm nuts and everyone I know is nuts. Now we're talented, you know, but I'm telling you this, I know a lot of people that are need to be on medication and I'm not saying that medication is not good, but I'm also saying we are an over medicated country because there are certain, like sometimes I will eat something I shouldn't eat. If I eat like a big ice cream sundae, I feel happy. I go, Oh, I like it. It feels good. But then you, then you get tired. Oh, God, oh, I'm sad now because the sugar high is over. The high of the sugar is over, the insulin crash comes, and then you're just like, oh, I didn't, I, why did I do it? And then you're disgusted with yourself. And you're like, I've been bad, I've been bad. And you get upset and these negative feelings. And listen, that can happen with booze, it right. can happen with food, it can happen with any of these things, right? It can happen with laziness and sloth. If you don't do it, you don't want to accomplish the things you're doing you then get disgusted and it becomes this negative feedback loop where you're like, I'm a piece of shit. Those are more situational things mm. that can be helped by lifestyle changes and maybe some light medication, tiny pill, walk around the track, walk around at seven 30 at night, have a Jasmine tea, get in your bed, nut. get in your bed and don't be a nut. Now, there's some people that have deeper problems than that, where it's very bad. I had a friend named Andrea. You know already it's going to be bad. You know already it's going to be bad. I liked Andrea a lot. She was a witch, a modern witch, a Wiccan, very mortal. And I liked Andrea a lot. She was fun. She was sick. When I was a young person, she was part of my group. My group included skaters, stoners, goths, and uh, drug dealers. Um, I guess they were jocks. I mean, some of them were, you know, they were, it's not like they weren't being drafted, but they, some of them were, you know, able-bodied for sure, physical, you know, they would fight people and, you know, brandish weapons when, when you know, when need be. Uh, but it, we, we had a big tent because drugs, and that's the beautiful things about drugs, that's why I recommend them, is that it is a great big tent. So you would have, and, and she was a lovely goth girl, and she had a big um, um, knife. 
that she would cut herself with. Not always. Not always. Not in front of you. You understand what I'm saying? She was a witch. She wore all black, which I like. I still like that. I still like that. She was a witch and she cut herself with a big knife. And she had a lot of weed and we all smoked weed with her. And when she was happy, when a depressed person is happy, it's so beautiful because they're not usually happy. She was manic. I believe she was manic depressive. And she would be so, and we would laugh. I mean, she was fun. There were times when we would just sit there in the back of the library because no one ever went in Long Island to the libraries. And many people use drugs there in the back of them because no one goes to them. And, and the people that work there don't really pay attention because no one goes to the light. Unless you're like, what, like an older, like a guy like my uncle who like goes in and he's like, I want a book on Ulysses S. Grant. And it's like, hey, shut up. But you know, like he'll go in and get a book on Ulysses S. Grant and then go, go into the back room of his house and drink. Um, and, but we'd be sitting in the back of the library, me, her, and my friend, and we would smoke pot and just start laughing so hard. Nobody even said anything. Nobody even said anything. But it was just the, the fun, the humanity. And I believe she was, she was in many mental institutions, like over and over again. I think she's dead now. I think she's dead, but I don't. Here's the thing. I don't know. She might be alive. She was a witch and she had a big knife. My point is that there are people out there with problems. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's dead or not. If she's not dead, don't DM me. I don't, I don't play that game anymore. I, you know, I've moved on. But the point is what I am saying, and it's, it's, it's hard to make this coherent, but I think the people out here that are, that are really connecting with it are understanding what I mean. What I mean is that this person had problems, but was a beautiful person that I believe, I believe now is dead, but I don't know. I don't know if she's dead or not, but fun times, somebody would just giggle like a, like a, like a hyena. She would cackle like a mad woman and then run off with her knife into the night. These are the memories that if you, if you're not making the memories, I think she's dead. My point is that you have to be careful with this medication because had we medicated her earlier on those beautiful moments that we experienced I don't know. You know, maybe they wouldn't have been, uh, wouldn't have been around. I, I hate to sound selfish about it, but she was a fun person. We met her like twice, two or three times. <laughs> but but you, when you're on drugs and you hang out with somebody back then, back in the late nineties and early two thousand. When you hung out with somebody, it was like all day, all night. People used to go out at 11 a.m. and get back at 5 a.m. All day, all night. There were different drugs for different hours. The golden, there was always nice weed in the golden hour, the gloaming, the, the sunset, and then the coke was at night. But I mean, you know, like, and, or the hallucinogens or whatever you were doing that night. But, you know, I was in the grocery store a few uh, a few minutes ago and the guy was talking to his, his girlfriend. And he's like, yeah, they're all from the Bay Area. They're really into hallucinogens. They're like super smart guys. I'm hanging out with them this weekend. They always get into something fucking crazy. And I'm like, the whole state's just drug addicts. The entire state is people that are just in some form of like psychosis. It's crazy. They're really smart guys from the Bay Area. They're like super into hallucinogens. I'm hanging out with them this weekend. They always get into something. And she was like, yeah. She goes, I only go out on Friday and Saturday nights. And he goes, that's really like respectable. That's like a California conversation. That's really respectable. You do. I only go out on Friday and Saturday nights. That's really respectable. They're from the Bay Area. They're very hallucinogens. Yeah. 
I met a guy. He told me his job is he provides drugs for the Rolling Stones. I said, no way. Get Keith Richards on the phone. And he did. And I played Satisfaction and he liked it. So, you know, he's a drug dealer, but you never know. What I'm saying is that with the drugs and the, and the children, you have to be careful with it. All right. What else do we have? There's some other things, but that's the message really. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty coherent. I think I explained it well. Yeah. LA voters in Los Angeles will decide if the homeless can be housed in vacant hotel rooms. We got about 20,000 empty hotel rooms. We've got 20,000 empty hotel. Why wouldn't people come here? So there's 20,000 empty hotel rooms there where people, well, there's so many of these hotels. They're just dumps, right? Oh, a lot of them. Right. Yeah. A lot of these oh, things yeah. are like dumps. Mm -hmm. And you know, why wouldn't you put a homeless people in the hotel? Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're all surrounded LAX. They're not filled anymore, you know? Right. So a lot of these hotels, because, I mean, if you're staying by LAX, I mean, you're just doing drugs. You're cheating on your wife. I mean, there's no, or you're like maybe of some crazy, like, layover. You want to sleep for six hours. I don't sure. know. But nobody, there's only, really, here's the reality. Here's the reality. There's one hotel to stay in if you visit Los Angeles. It's called the Beverly Hills Hotel. Okay? And frankly, you have to stay there. And it's mm -hmm. about 1100 a night or maybe 1400 a night. Um, you have to stay there. If you don't stay there, don't come. Don't come. Don't come. What did Kamala Harris say? Don't come. Do not come. Do not come. If you cannot stay at the Beverly Hills. And, and here's why. I'm not trying to be classist. I'm telling you, there, everything else sucks. Well, Hotel Bel Air. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Hotel Bel Air. Very nice. And there's Beverly Hills Hotel. The Waldorf is fine as well. Do not go near Santa Monica. It's a madhouse. There's nothing really in Malibu to stay. There's nowhere to stay. I mean, I'm not even making this up, folks. I'm not, you know what I mean? Downtown is a Ritz, but it's a dump. Um, I'm genuinely, I'm like you racking my brain. There's like nothing. You got to go to Manicito to like San Ysidro Ranch or Rosewood in, in Miramar. I'm telling you, mm. unless you're like, like have a, you're a young person and you just want to come here to like fucking get fucked up and hang, like that's a whole different story. You're obviously, you'll have a friend, you'll have a couch, you'll stay in a cheap place. If you're an older person and you're actually visiting California and you go, listen, we're going to spend five grand on a trip and we're going to stay somewhere nice for two or three nights, whatever it is, like I'm telling you, there's, there's a dearth of good options here. Uh, there's not a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, there is uh, in uh, Pasadena, they have the one that I've stayed at a few times, the Langham. Oh, what the Langham is, is yeah, nice. Yeah, it's really nice yeah, yeah. Pasadena. There's a few. There's really a few, but there's not a ton. And mm. I'm not trying, everyone's like, oh, you make money now. You're a big cunt. I'm like, yeah, maybe, but I'm telling you the truth. Mm. New York, there's so many hotels. Here, there's just not a lot of hotels. And the ones that are left are going to be um, filled with the homeless. Mm. And that's okay, too, because I say just give it to them. Manoj Patel is the manager at an LA Motel 6. He voluntarily rents some rooms to homeless people who are vetted and paid for by a local church. Quote, honestly, would you check into a hotel knowing the chances of your neighbor to the left or to the right is a homeless individual? No offense. If you're staying at a Motel 6, you lose the right to demand that the people next to you aren't homeless. Really? It's a Motel 6, mm -hmm. right? If you're staying at a Motel 6, I imagine the people that are staying in the room next to me are either homeless or they'll be homeless within three months. It's a fucking Motel 6. If you're an extended stay America, if you're at an extended stay America, a Motel 6, even the lower ends of the best, oh, the Safari Inn in Burbank. Shout out. Oh, shout, shout out. out to the Safari Inn in Burbank. Yeah. But you know, this idea, yeah. now they're not going to put these people at the Beverly Hills Hotel, I'll lose my fucking mind. They can't do it. Oh, that would be. If they do that, if they do that, I will, I will, I will be on a tank with Ron DeSantis in this town with a with a rocket launcher. <laughs> Some places need to be fucking nice. I'm sorry. What do you think civilization's about, you fucking slugs? Stop trying to ruin everything and make everything ugly and shit. Some places need to be. You can you can put these people in the Best Western. I don't give a shit. Let them take shits at the fucking Continental Breakfast. I don't care. It is what it is. I stayed in those hotels for years doing comedy. I, I, I don't give a shit. I smoke in a room when I go to those places. I act like a homeless person mm -hmm. in those hotels. So I have no problem with them being in those hotels. But if I see them at the Beverly Hills Hotel, I'm going to get Rick Caruso, and we're going to come here with Caitlyn Jenner, and fucking we're going to light shit up.
They cannot be at Hotel Bel Air. They cannot be at the Beverly Hills uh, Hotel. You know, I mean, it's just what it is. You can't have it all. I don't know. I mean, what do you think about this? The homeless in the hotels. Uh, also, I forgot Four Seasons in Westlake. Shout out to them as well. Yes, Four Seasons in Westlake, but there's no reason great to stay restaurant. there. The restaurant is great, but there's really no reason to stay no. there. Mm -mm. Unless you, what are you doing? You know, the only attraction at the Four Seasons in Westlake is my fat agent. Now, if you want to bring your kids and show them him, you know, it is kind of a marvel. It's not nothing, but that's the only attraction. It's probably better than the Santa Monica Pier. You could feed him and he does, he does a few tricks, not many. You could toss him bacon, he grabs the phone, he calls Zanies in Nashville. We should do a show on that. Well, I did that the rhyming recently. Anyway, I mean, that's what it is. We have anything else here? I, I don't care about these yes. hotels anymore. Mm. Put everyone anywhere. I, you know, people say to me all the time, what do you get somebody? What do you get somebody? I say, you go to boxofawesome.com and you get them the bespoke post. It's a box. They ship it once a month. It is amazing. No matter what you're into, they have a different box for you. From must-have travel items to camping gear essentials, if you're an outdoorsman, if you love booze, they have cool stuff to become like a bartender. I'm telling you. And it's all from American companies. Each box of awesome, you're supporting small businesses. 90% of everything is, is from a small up-and-coming brand. It's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Box of awesome is really amazing, right? I mean, you can get a gift for somebody that keeps giving throughout the year. They never forget. Mm hmm I mean, I enjoy this so much. What was your favorite box of awesome so, you've gotten? So they just sent me this bag that I'm actually taking to Europe, and it's oh very my, fancy what, and European. Wait, it what? It it's this bag that opens. It has like a hard bottom to it, and it's it's really like fashionable and stuff. So I don't have to like just walk around my with my backpack like I'm a 12 year old. You know, I can be like an adult. With you like got a, a bag that you're taking to Europe? Yeah, yeah. You know what box I do want to get? What? The Scorch box. It says hot sauces from small brands all over the country with some from Texas, Nevada, California. I hope they send me that one next. Didn't they also send you the river box? It was it came with a diving knife? Yes, it was lovely. Anyway, go to boxofawesome.com and enter the code Tim Dillon at checkout. What's the coolest thing about this is you can give someone a gift that actually all year round they are enjoying. Yes. Can you, and by the way, it's not a lot of money. For an entire year for 12 boxes. This is really cool if somebody you know is going away to college or moving to a new city. You get them this and they always remember you. Boxofawesome.com. Awesome's in a box now. I love that it's from a small business though. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Tim Dillon at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Code Tim Dillon for 20% off your first box. Boxofawesome.com. You might get a knife. Let me tell you right now about Athletic Greens. They are so athletic and so green that I don't even know what to do when I'm on them. I take them. And it's so easy. It's probiotics. They help the stomach. They give you energy. It's not coffee. There's no crashing. You've got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It's a special blend that supports gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all of the things. When you take Athletic Greens, you feel like, is that line from Titanic where he goes, I'm the king of the world? Isn't that from Titanic? Are you out of it? I don't think it is. I think it is. I'm the king of the world movie. I'm the king of the world. Wasn't that Titanic? Oh, it is Titanic. Yeah, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm, he goes, I'm the king of the world. And when you take um, this um, athletic greens, mm. you feel like you're the ki literal king of the world because oh, yeah. you have so much energy and your gut is healthy and it just boosts your immune system. I mean, there's so much. I mean, so to me, it's like, I'm like crazy. It costs you less than $3 a day. If you're investing in your health, it's cheaper than a cold brew habit. 
I mean, it's amazing. Athletic Greens is a, Athletic Greens is a climate neutral certified company. So really they care about the planet too. And they care about the earth. They've got over 7,000 five-star reviews. It's recommended by professional athletes. I mean, everybody loves it. Now tell your story with Athletic Greens. So here's what's great is like, yeah. it, it comes with like all the vitamin D and all that stuff. You need it to take that stuff. So you, you have good gut health. And so you feel healthy in the in the brain. How did you, you not know happy? I'm the king of the world is from Titanic? Because I, I thought it was. He's from a on cartoon. the front of the. I'm the king of the world. Yeah, it's Leo. Leo's on the on the front of the ship. Yeah. Right? Maybe he took Athletic Greens and then he went to the front of the ship. It wasn't around then. It's literally. It was. It's literally new, right? Yes, it is new. He could have found the. But anyway, these supplements you need. Huberman talks about this a lot. You, you take stuff like this. Andrew and Huberman. He talks about how this stuff makes you happy. You need a, you can't be a mount, uh, you need all the nutrients. You might you, not be getting them from certain foods. You can't just get by with all, you know, eating, you know, like waffles that you put in your pocket. Remember uh, Sad Guru? Yeah, Sad Guru. Sad Guru says there's not enough uh, stuff in the soil, like magnesium and uh, all the top I soil. I fucking love me some Sad Guru. So well, Sad Guru would probably say you need to take this stuff. Sad Guru is a king. It's for kings. You want to be a king or not, and queens, and in the middles. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase, all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Tim Dillon. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash Tim Dillon to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Oh, Drew Barrymore. This is interesting to me. Drew Barrymore is being accused of racism um, by black TikTokers mm. for copying black men frolicking trend after posting innocent video of herself enjoying the rain. Mm. Guys... This is uh, insane. And first of all, Drew Barrymore, let's be very honest, doesn't really know what she's doing, right? Like, can we say that? Can we just say that Drew Barrymore is not exactly aware of what's going on? Mm. You don't own frolicking. I've never seen black men frolic or any men frolic unless they're gay. And I, I, would, I will never suck off a man who's frolicking. So the reality is I don't even know what this trend is or who claims to own it, but this is just a sweet, mentally uh, enfeebled woman dancing in the rain. She has a show on television somehow, and she is a very sweet, mm. friendly, talented woman who is really no longer in control of her frontal cortex. And I don't think she should be blamed for anything at all ever including murder. If Drew Barrymore walked in right now and killed me, she doesn't know what she's doing and she didn't mean it. So can we, can we play this video of mm -hmm. her? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll show you the trend too, but this is the video people are very upset about. Ooh. Whenever you can go out into the rain, do not miss the opportunity. Yeah. She's not. <laughs> Where is she? New York. Uh, it appears that way. That, Never rains. Nothing here. like that is in LA. Anyway. Right. There's no rain here. This is just a dress, a Stephen King novel. The, this is the, uh, this is sort of a compilation of like the videos that are. Oh my God. I'm frolicking. Tell me we was frolicking. Oh my God. Wee! Wee! Okay. This is disgusting, to be honest. I don't know what this is, but I, I mean, this is like crazy. Mm. The world's lost his fucking mind. Um, and so people are angry at her because she went out into the rain. I mean, do, do, don't you see how fucking stupid all these people are? Don't you see how fucking dumb these people are? I don't know what to tell you anymore, but can't you wrap your head around how trigger happy these fucking online mobs are, how they're trying to make all these connections that don't exist. Drew Barrymore should be able to go out into the rain. All right, let's get this out. What else? This is, I mean, you know, Drew Barrymore, Trump is, uh, Trump's dealing with it. We, what may come next, an inquiry with legal peril. Uh, I don't know. They're, they're saying he had uh, documents and the CIA was saying that uh, confidential informants were being killed around the world mm -hmm. and that yeah. Trump had documents. Um, 
Potentially massive in light of what we now know. In October 2021, the CIA counterintelligence sent a top secret cable warning an unusual number of confidential informants were being killed, captured, or compromised. In January 2021, Trump stole documents on these kind of informants. Mm. Basically, they're alleging that Trump... Uh, and his family or through intermediaries is selling information to foreign governments. I think that's what they're kind that's of That's what they're into. I mean, and again, it's a very massive, big insinuation mm -hmm. of which there isn't that much evidence other than the fact that he was in possession mm -hmm. of these documents. But you no, know, this will this will uh, develop more in time and we'll figure out. I, I put nothing past the Trump crew. I don't know what they're doing. I also put nothing past the CIA. So it's it's a fun tennis match. <laughs> but Let's watch these things because children were serving food in a McDonald's and people were very uncomfortable. This, this made me laugh out loud. Mm. Quote, I'm not coming back here. McDonald's customers react to seeing kids behind the counter in Louisville location. A spokesperson for McDonald's said the children in the video are not employees. <laughs> customers spoke out Wednesday after witnessing kids behind the counter at, Louisville, at a Louisville McDonald's restaurant. Nathan Pitts and his girlfriend, Annette Cardwell, said they go to the McDonald's on Taylor Boulevard often. However, their Sunday night was the first time seeing underage kids inside. It was a school night. They should have been in bed. Cardwell and Pitt said two children were taking and making orders at 11 p.m. <laughs> they looked as young as 10 years old. The couple added that they were so disgusted by what they saw, they immediately asked for their money back. So they walked into a McDonald's. You walk into a McDonald's, you see kids mm -hmm. behind the counter. You're leaving, you're eating. I'm eating. Filet of fish. Oh, yeah. McDouble, no mustard, mm -hmm. McFlurry, small fry. I mean, I'm eating. Is there a video of yeah. one of the children working? So this is the video they have here. This was Nathan Pitt's reaction after pulling up to the window at the McDonald's. It's blurred out, obviously. It's it's right. Ridiculous. And wonder why the lines wrapped around because I got these little kids up in this mouth. Pitts and his girlfriend Annette Cardwell say they come to this McDonald's often. However, they say Sunday was their first time seeing underage kids inside. It was a school night. They should have been in bed. They're Instead, working! The says the two children were taking and making orders at 11 at night. Shut they your mouth and get to McRib! To Stop being a rat! Cardwell says they look Stop being a rat! Get your fucking fries and leave! It's not your business! Mm. Are they running the operation properly? Are they making the McFlurries? Are they fucking, is everything hot and ready to go? If it is, who cares? Why are we limiting what children can do? Let them manage at McDonald's. Keep going. It looks like they're accepting the food here. They do, yeah, I'm sure they did, by the way. This is to protect their identity. Cobwell says they look as young as 10 years old. The fact that these kids just handed me my drinks is pissing me off. But those kids should not have been behind that counter at all. The couple says they were so disgusted by what they saw, they immediately started recording and asked for their money back. I need a refund, please. I need a refund. Sorry. I need a refund. I went to the McDonald's today to get some answers. The general manager says the owner told her she's not allowed to comment on this situation. I also reached out to McDonald's corporate office. A spokesperson for the company says, quote, we are aware of the incident and can confirm that the minors shown in the video are not employees of the restaurant. They are children of some of the employees. While we are proud to employ many parents and caregivers and understand that sometimes kids may visit a parent's workplace, minors who are not employees are not permitted behind the counter. We have taken action to ensure that all of our employees are reminded of our policies regarding visitors. As for Pitts and Codwell, they say McDonald's officially lost two loyal customers. I'm not coming back here. Okay, well, great. I wonder if McDonald's are, will survive. I hate, I don't like rats, man. And I don't like the, the idea that people are, you know, mm -hmm. somebody brought their kids to work and they're like, hey, why don't you get behind the counter and start fucking, mm. I'm a little drugged up today. Why don't you get behind the counter and help mom out? Because mom's a little high. And could you take some orders while I fucking try to straighten up, splash some cold water on my face. Mm. This is a very American story, and it's actually beautiful. A child visits their mother who's high, who's working at McDonald's. She's too high to take orders. Mm -hmm. So she says to her children, can you help mom out? Can you take the orders while I try to sober myself up? Missouri School District revives paddling to discipline students. This is odd. Mm -hmm. Man, Missouri's a real, uh, 
it's a really interesting place. And by interesting, I mean a uh, hole. I mean, I've been there. I mean, man, can you imagine? No offense if you live there. I mean, you know, God bless. Comics are supposed to like everywhere. So if I go to that place, I'm supposed to sell tickets there. Um, so they're supposed to like every place and they're not supposed to insult any place. Right. Well, then don't listen to the show and don't come because I don't care. Formerly known as, I mean, what am I going to pretend that formerly corporal punishment, the disciplinary measure usually involves striking students on the buttocks with a wooden paddle. In Cassville, staff members will employ, quote, reasonable physical force without, quote, a chance of bodily injury or harm in the presence of a witness. Wait, what? Interesting. So I guess they can't hit them too hard, basically, is what they're saying. Right. And someone also has to be in the room, which that how, that's how it was when I got spanked, too, I think. Yeah, well, this is just insane. I mean, you grew up in hell. I mean, listen, the reality is it's just this is what happens when a country completely falls apart, and this is like people are like going to, like, you know, they're going to start whacking kids with paddles in school. I just don't understand. I, 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 you know, if you came home and you're like a teacher hit me with a paddle, I mean, you know, I just, I, I, I don't think it's necessary. I think you should be able to discipline children without hitting them with a paddle. Mm. You know, is this the only other option we have besides drugging them? That's unfortunate. So we have to either give them 19 medications or hit them with a paddle. These are the two these are the two options we have in the quote greatest country in the world where everyone's such a fucking smart, resourceful person. The only way you can deal with children is to attack them, hit them with a paddle or drug them. Give them antipsychotic medication. Like it's just crazy. Uh it's not new in schools and um my father was paddled and blah blah mm. blah in the Catholic school. The nuns would hit him with a ruler, you know, and um, what, what, which town in Missouri is this? I guess it's, I think it's statewide, I believe, or it's a school district. So it says, uh, Cassville. Yeah. Go to house for sale, Cassville, Missouri. Okay. House for sale, Cassville, Missouri. Let's see here. Let's see what we're working with here. Let's see if we can get a selling sunset franchise. Okay. Realtor.com. Okay. I prefer Zillow. Okay. Let me go back to Zillow. Here we go. Cassville, Missouri. Uh, it ain't cheap. Wow. None of this is cheap. What's interesting is these are actually really pretty homes. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are in the low end, you know, below two, below 300. But for the, the, the homes we're seeing here, a lot of these, some of them dip. Some of them are really nice homes. But go down, go down. There's more, there's more to the story here. Go to that 67.5. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. This is, this is where, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord, imagine. Yeah. So, I mean, th those are the people who they go, you want us to hit your kids? And they go, yeah, please. We'll hit them. Let's all kill them. There's a dog in one of the real estate photos. Is that a real dog? Yeah. He's like chained up too. There is a chained dog in one of the real estate photos. Lovely. There it is. Mm. I like the kitchen, lots of natural light. Mm -hmm. I like the rotted wood. It makes me think a horror movie scene. I can imagine blood spilling out into the sink. Let's see what the primary bedroom's like. Oh, ashtray on ashtray, the table. Great. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. I li see, I like when you've punched through a wall and you conceal it <laughs> with a blanket that you hang on the wall. Nothing wrong with that. Man. Yeah. They didn't show us the primary, unless that's the primary, not the master. Get the realtor on the phone right now. <laughs> Who's representing the property? Oh, I, I, I'm telling you right now, I, I want to know. I want to know who is representing the property. Um, I'll call him in two seconds. Mm, it's dipped in value. It says, "Has it?" Yeah, it, it was up to like seventy at some point. Well, it's good time. It's good, good time to buy. Call Larry. Call Larry I'm call right now. Up. 
because I have a few questions about this property. Okay, I'm connecting. And let's dial Let's see if he here. answers. I mean, no one works anymore. No, they, we, nobody's good for anything in this fucking country, but maybe Larry will answer and help sell me this house. Look up his number. He's a good man. I just want to make sure this is in the school district where the kids are getting hit. That's my biggest concern right now with this okay. property is that this is in the school district where the children are being. Uh, so this, this is him. That's great. Okay. Tries office or sell? Sell. He's out. It's about. a weekend. It's a Saturday, right? Yeah, that's when they work. That's when real estate agents should work. Okay, here we go. What town is this? Cass Cassville, Cassville, Missouri. Hello, you have reached the voicemail of. Do you want to leave a voicemail? If you will leave me your name, number, yeah. and a short message, I will return your call. Have a good day. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Larry, how are you? My name is Brendan Schaub. I'm looking for a property uh, in Cassville, and I see that you're the guy there. A couple of my friends have recommended to me that you are the guy. There's a beautiful home on Harold Street that looks like a real, like a fixer-upper. And I just wanted to make sure that it was still on the market. It wasn't in escrow and it was in the school district where the kids were able to get paddled because I have a few kids myself and i quite frankly, corporal punishment is exactly what they need. So assuming that the taxes are good, I'd love to move forward. Thank you. And give me a ring back when you can. Okay. Hung up. All right. Thanks for watching everyone. <laughs> we'll update you, but I think this is a great investment property. Uh, TimDillonComedy.com. Nothing on sale yet. Things might be on sale. Merch dropping very soon. Mm. We've gone to some, we've made some really, really cool merch stuff that's mm. coming. So at TimDillonComedy.com, can they sign up to be alerted yes, when the, merch comes out? Yeah, they can. Oh my oh, God. Not only the special. Tim well. Dillon, the real hero on Netflix, if you care. And then go to the bottom of the website, sign up for. Go to the bottom of the website, sign up for the merch. The merch is really cool. We've mm. got the knife fight shirt and hoodies and everything coming out. New fake business stuff. Mm -hmm. I wish them well. Uh, Ben's going to cut a really cool promo um, and we will see everybody else. Thank you for spending your Saturday night with us. And oh, it, um, what else was I going to say? Um, yeah. Yeah. Watch the special if you can mm -hmm. and um, tell a friend we want it. We want Netflix to be happy with the numbers. They are certainly. Um, but uh Yeah. Do you have anything to add? I'll put a link for the Netflix special so you can just click it. I'll take you right oh, to it after. How this. easy Go is that? It. How easy is that? Do you have anything to add in closing? Uh, the the iPad thing. What? Well, the the thing with the kid. I was gonna say when you take the iPad away from the kid, I was gonna say they go nuts. They start squirming and going crazy. That's why I wasn't like I wasn't doing like a non sequitur thing. What? When you asked me if I knew a kid like that, that was crazy. And I told you the thing about like Roblox and stuff. Oh, yeah, I was I was getting to the. I sounded very like a fool. I wanted to just go back to it real quick. You sounded like a fool then. Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify that that part. I was getting to the thing where I was. I didn't want to make it look like I was just telling a story about a child I once knew. I was trying to connect it to what you were saying. Noted. That's what I would like to add. I would like to go on the record. Noted. Well, there's that. Have fun in Europe with your wife. Oh, yeah. Going to Europe. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. If you see Ben in Europe, say hello to him. Right? No? Mm -hmm. if, you're, Europe. if you're in Austria. Some time off. Tim Dillon grants time off. Has Tim Dillon, does Tim Dillon go gallivanting around Europe? No, because I'm a workhorse, and all I do is work. All I do is work for the betterment of the community and myself and him and everyone. But I understand he's gallivanting through Europe, but what will I, I'll be working as I always am. And I always will be because there are Kings and there are Titans. And then there are every, there's everybody else and uh, have a good time. And I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Keep your mouth shut before you're fucking replaced. 
I'll go get that retarded producers Chrysler's podcast. I'll be sitting here in five minutes. All right, everyone. Good luck.